Dear students, in the previous class, I have started the lesson measurement. So we are going to continue the same lesson in this session also. In the previous class, we studied about some physical quantities, that is the fundamental quantities we studied like length, mass, time, temperature, electric current, amount of substance, luminous intensity. Now, in this class, we are going to learn about the derived quantities which is given in your book. The derived quantities which is given in your book are plane angle and solid angle. What is plane angle? When you draw a line, just draw a line and other line is drawn, we can see there is an intersection point. That intersection point forms an angle, it is called as plane angle. So I can say in the proper definition, the angle between the intersection of two lines or intersection of two planes. The SI unit of this plane angle is nothing but radian and it is denoted by the letters R, A, D. So let me see, let me see what is radian. Just draw a circle and make a center point as O. You measure the length from here it is called as radius. So you take the length of this radius and draw a line over this circumference. Just you push this line over the circle we can get an arc. Join these two points. So here you can see an arc is cut and there is an angle formed. This is also the same radius. Here also the length is also the same radius. Here also we have the same radius. So this angle is called as radian. So we are, we are going to calculate how to convert degrees to radian. We know we, we want to know how many arcs makes a complete circle. So, so number of arcs is equal to 2 pi because 2 pi r is the circumference of the circle. To have a complete rotation, we have 360 degree to make a complete rotation is equal to 2 pi radians. Radians is nothing but the radius. The measurement is called as radians. So, to calculate the radians, pi radians is equal to 360 by 2 where pi radians is equal to 180 degree therefore 1 radian is equal to 180 by pi. So this is the value we will find. So 1 radian pi radian is equal to 180 degree therefore 1 radian is equal to 180 by pi. I hope you can understand what is plane angle. I just give a recall or review of plane angle. Plane angle is nothing but the angle formed between the intersection of two lines or intersection of two planes. What is the SI unit of this plane angle is nothing but a radian. What is radian? Radian is the angle subtended on the surface of the circle, sorry, the center of the circle by an arc whose length is equal to the radius of the circle. So that is called as radian. So what is, uh, how will you calculate the radians? We know that one radian is equal to 180 by pi. This is the method of finding the radians. Next we are going to see about uh, the next derived quantity is nothing but the solid angle. Solid angle, the angle formed between three or more lines of the, for example when I draw a cone, we will draw a cone in such a way. So this line is, so we can see it is a three dimension, three dimensional one. So solid angle can be here it forms an angle this angle is called as solid angle and the unit for this solid angle is steradian s t e steradian and it is noted by the letter s r so we have learned about the plane angle and this solid angle which are the derived quantities next we are going to see a very interesting topic is nothing but the clocks for what purpose we will use the clocks the clocks are used to measure the time. In ancient days, people used different types of clocks to measure the time. Like sand clock or water clock or sundial to measure the clock. So we are using in our uh, homes the normal clocks which we call as analog clocks or sometimes we use digital clocks. So we classify the clocks based on their display and based on their working mechanism. 
So, based on display it is called as analog clock that we use in all the places and also other clock is digital clock. So, analog clock is nothing but it has a three hands one is hard hand, minute hand and second hand. We already studied these things in your lower classes. So, what is hard hand how it looks like? The hard hand is the short and thick one and the next one is minute hand it is long and thin hand it shows the minutes and second hand is long and is very thin. So, it can, can gives one rotation to co complete one minute and 60 rotation to complete one hour. So, this uh, clock can be driven either mechanically or electronically. So, that is all about this analog clock. Next we are going to learn about the digital clock. The digital clock we are using digital watches. So, what we see in that one? We will see directly the numbers that is displayed in the digital clock. Nowadays we can see the temperature, uh, walking steps, we have the smart watches everything. All these things is based on the digital clocks. The next thing we are going to learn about the clocks working on based on the working conditions that is working mechanism. There are two clocks we can say quartz clock as well as atomic clock. Quartz clock is nothing but it uses an electronic oscillation controlled by the quartz crystals. So, here the crystals are used which makes which gives an oscillation to produce the time. For example, the, the accuracy of this quartz clock is very perfect than the normal manual clock or electronic clock, mechanical clock. Next we are going to see about the atomic clock. Atomic clock uses periodic vibration within the atom, the atoms will be present and there will be the periodic vibrations, the vibrations will be there. I forgot to say about the quartz clock how it works. So, it works on the basis of piezo quartz electricity property. The property which is used here is piezo quartz property. What is this? Nothing but when you give a pressure to this quartz that is to these crystals, it produces a potential difference and it makes the quartz crystals to vibrate. So, that is a way we able to measure the time. So, the next is as I said we have already dealt about the atomic clock, how it works. The atomic clock works using the periodic vibration within the atoms. So, where it is used? It is used in GPS. What is GPS? Global positioning system and the next one is global navigation satellite system. So, here it is used this atomic clocks are used in these places and it is a very accurate uh, instrument that is clocks to measure the time. So, when we talk about this time we are going to learn about GMT and IST. So, let me see what is GMT and IST. So, GMT is nothing but Greenwich Meridian Time and whereas IST is Indian Standard Time. So, this Greenwich Meridian Time is an average solar time, solar energy that is calculated by in the observatory of uh, which is located in the Greenland in London. The next is nothing but IST, it is the time measured from the, it is depends upon the longitudes of the earth zones, both the times are depends upon the longitudes of the earth zones. So, I hope you can understand what is Greenwich Meridian and Indian Standard IST also. Now, we are going to learn about the next important topic in measurement is nothing but um, accuracy and precision which is very important for us to learn the measurements. So, what is accuracy and what is precision? Accuracy is a closeness of the measured value to the real value. For example, you are taking you are measuring something, the measurement may be some 
180 kilograms. So the measure, the actual value is 180 grams, but your measurement may be some 170. Uh, 8 uh, kilograms, one may get 178 kilograms, one may get as 175 kilograms, so which is near to this uh, measured value. The next one is precision, precision is the closeness of two or more measurements to each other. So next we are going to learn about approximation, the term we are going to learn about is approximation when you prepare a dish in your home we won't have the perfect measurement of the ingredients to prepare a dish we will have the approximate value we will take approximate it differs uh, based on the number of people the taste everything so the approximation is a number which is e somewhat equal to the measured one but it won't be the actual value to make it as an approximate value we should estimate that. So how to estimate that? We can estimate by using the method called rounding off. So I hope you can understand what is approximation. Approximation is nothing but finding a solution to the measured value with the measured value that is all. So now how to round off? We use calculators. When we use calculators it will give big big numbers the digits will be more. We have to we can't able to use all the numbers so we will use to round off the numbers. So how to use these numbers, how to round off the numbers, there are some rules. That is, let me take a number as 175.4527 and 3. I want to approximate this numbers. We just see the last digit of this numbers or uh, let me reduce the numbers so that it will be easy for you to understand. The last, take the last number which you have to be round off. You see the last number is 2. If you take 2, you would see the near, nearest number to the 2 is 5. So if it is 5 or if it is equal to 5, you will just take as it is, we just leave it off this 2 and we denote the symbol as approximation like this. We use the symbol approximate like this. We will write as 175.45. So this is the rounding off method. When the number is, let me have the same number, I will just change the last digit alone. So you just see the last digit, the last digit is 7. When I approximate, if it is greater than 5, if 7 is greater than 5, so I will increase by one number to the near number and I can write the approximation like this as 175.48. So this, sorry, 4, 7. So this number is added by increased by 1, leaving the number. So that we can make it as a small numbers. Even that we can able to reduce these numbers according to our need of measurements. So I hope that you can understand the lessons, what, are, what I thought, the topics what I thought in this lesson. Shall we have a recall about the topics what we studied in this session? In this session, we studied about the derived quantities is nothing but plane angle and solid angle. The SI unit of solid angle, sorry, plane angle is radian and the SI unit of plane, solid angle is steradian. And next we studied about the topic is clocks. We, study, we learn about uh, based on, we classify the clocks based on the um, display as well as working mechanism. On display it is classified as analog and digital clocks. Analog clocks is nothing but very simple clocks we are using in our day to day life as well as the digital clock and based on working mechanism quartz clock and atomic clock. So how the quartz clock work is uses electronic oscillation. It uses electronic oscillation controlled by quartz crystal. What is the property uses? Piezo quartz property is used. The next one is atomic clock uses periodic vibration within the atoms. It is used to find the time or measure the time between GPS, global positioning system, global navigation, satellite system, everything. When we talk about the time, we should know about what is GMT and IST. I have rubbed here, it is not here. GMT and IST. GMT is nothing but Greenwich Meridian Time and IST is Indian Standard Time. The next we studied about the very important topic which we use for the measurement is nothing but accuracy and precision. 
accuracy is nothing but closeness of the measured value to the actual value and precision is closeness of measurements that is two or more more measurements to each other that is the main point of this things both we can say somewhat same accuracy and precision is somewhat same but here the measurement is is uh, what we say the measurements can be compared when we say about this measurement we need some approximate values when we get an approximate value when we have an estimation how will you estimate by rounding off the numbers so all these things are based or only used for the measurements i hope you can understand this lesson and thank you let me see in the next session